go. My date is just crumb. Time flying by these fools thinking slow. No cap before we even get started into this video because this is about to be a video that should change your perspective on how you see porn but this is going to be very dark very discreet but transparent and these things have to be brought to light so shout out to Gian Franco Martinez for this video because it's 15 minutes and 54 seconds of women in the porn industry just telling their story of what they go through and there are many guys who, and women as well, who will probably be like, how can we feel sorry for a porn star when they sold themselves in that industry? We don't know why people become porn stars. And what's crazy, if there wasn't money involved, porn wouldn't even exist because people wouldn't have to sell their bodies to get paid. People wouldn't have to sell their holes or their own enlightenment towards the industry that does not care about your own life your perspective on life they don't care about what you do with your life but they care what you can do with your life to provide for their lifestyle to feed their family so if you're not wasting your energy your time your patience your mindset if you're not wasting your vital source into their industry then they have no use of you and that's exactly what these women are trying to understand but some people don't understand a woman's mindset and what they do to feed their kids because a lot of these women probably do have kids i don't even know a lot of these porn stars besides like besides like me and khalifa ain't this shit with it but what i'm saying is or Lana Rhodes. Like, you hear these names, but we don't really care because niggas be horny. Niggas just want to see them just bounce on dildos all goddamn day. Niggas want to... <laughs> oh, my God. She's about to fucking make me bust. Oh, my God. Like, niggas start losing their train of thought and shit. Like, watching this woman please herself on a, on a pixelated screen, not knowing if you really look at yourself, if you observe yourself in the mirror and you watch yourself masturbate to a pixelated screen you would you would be disgusted with your own ignorance because you're wasting your energy on a woman who does not even know your existence now on top of that you're you're masturbating to trauma and pain and misery in an addiction at a low consciousness manner but some people don't see it like that because they want to justify their addiction because it's all they know so a nigga who masturbates or a woman who masturbates they will justify why it's why the porn industry should stay not knowing that there are many children there are kids who get trafficked in this industry every single day and you have a lot of women like this who are sitting there writing their faces and eating them out on camera and shit and you have a bunch of guys who are doing away with whatever woman they want or man on camera and you're watching it in a category like pogs or bbws or whatever the case may be they have many categories of sex traffickers but people don't see it that way because they can't even see through their own ignorance they just want to get a fix that's exactly what crackheads do motherfuckers want to get on their computer or on their phone they want to go to their favorite website go to the same exact video that same exact video that made them feel great it made them feel comfortable in their own blissfulness it made them feel like they were at home it made them feel relaxed they want to go back to that video to where they can fantasize over what they can't have the porn industry is literally poison and if you say otherwise then you are justifying your demonic ways i'm neither right nor wrong viewer discretion is advised that's why being the number one performer in the industry at the time, everyone wanted to make money off me, so they pushed me to do these things. Um, and it just gets really extreme, like you were saying, abusive. I don't want to go into too much detail. Like, honestly, some of my experiences are really humiliating for me, and I wish that they never happened. So in order for her to get, and what's crazy, we got to understand what she just says. Lana Rose, for her to have her big name, for her to get to the top of the industry, she had to go through humiliation rituals, literally. That's why she didn't want to talk about it because she knows that what she did was not right, but she just wanted what? Money. People just wanted that name. People want to be looked at. People want to be fantasized. People want to be admired from other people. People want to, people want to be inspirational, but she knows she regrets it because what did it cost you? You gain everything to lose what? Your soul. There's stuff going on, like people getting pissed on. Men are pissing inside of women. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. Did I just hear that correctly? Who's allowing pissing inside of their vagina? I don't want to replay that. It's there. Sorry. Oh, don't cry. Wow. I've lost my whole family. Um, it's 
sucks. So a lot of times when people ask me if they should do porn, I tell them no. I tell them that. So tell them a lie. When they know you do it and you still gonna lie about it. Delusional. It makes life really hard. It makes dating really hard. It makes your family life really hard. It makes And then when people before it if you are a woman or a man growing up and you're watching this video, it can be now or in the future, hear their testimony, hear their truth to let you know what you should not be doing with your life. You know that it's going to be hard for you to find love. You know it's going to be hard for you to find a family when you're doing OnlyFans or porn. You are basically presenting yourself to be trafficked by pimps and hoes. Intimacy hard. If you're putting yourself out there and the world is now judging you. You have to be okay with being shamed every day of your life. I don't even want to have children because I do porn because I'm worried of the way that people will treat my child with me personally. That's growth though. At least she has a conscience. There are many people who are doing OnlyFans and who are actually selling their body on OnlyFans. And there are many kids and teenagers getting picked on and killing themselves every single day. Welcome to the new generation though. So we're going to have a bunch of kids who are going to be angry, mad, sad. We're going to have a bunch of killers out here who want to kill because their mom or dad is doing OnlyFans, selling their body. And kids are going to back to school saying, hey, I just got done busting five nuts to your mom's video. She was shaking her ass and she had two dildos, one on her ass and one on her pussy. And guess what? I seen her face and I know that face. That's your mom, my nigga. What is your mom doing on OnlyFans? And what's crazy, I paid that subscription. I paid $20 for to see her shake her ass and to pop her pussy. Thank you for having a mom like yours. Imagine a nigga hearing that shit every day of his life. But hold on. Mom got to put food on the table. My mom was supportive in the beginning. She kind of just let me do whatever. But I think it was exactly, because you she was providing what? A lifestyle that her mom never had. Why stop? Why stop being a sellout? Why stop being a sellout? Moms indicate this kind of behavior because there's no father figure stepping in. A father would never let their mom or, not their mom, a father wouldn't ever let their daughter or their son go into these industries. But the thing is though, a child would do whatever he wants to do. So you can't stop that. But having a father in her life would help her understand you are, you are worth more than a sex toy. You are you are more than a sex toy or a sex object. You are more than just a quick nut. You are a divine feminine being. Act like it. I think I had a lot of freedom. As time progressed and I became successful, I started to feel like my mom was using me so that she could live a more luxurious lifestyle. When I started to set like these boundaries, not giving her money or things like that, it made our relationship a bit more difficult and almost toxic. And so it sucks. I don't have a mom anymore. I don't talk to her. I miss having a mom. Imagine your mom not talking to you because you don't want to give her money from your OnlyFans or your Pornhub account. Imagine your mom disclaiming you because you don't want to give her any of that blood money that you sacrificed your body with. That's a mom. Like you can't rewind and you can't go back. I don't have that relationship with her anymore. I don't ever think I will. And that bums me out. Bums me out a lot. I talked to my dad. He struggles with my, my job being in the industry. He's also religious. Recently, I wanted to go visit him. And he said that I, I can't go visit because his wife, my stepmom, doesn't want me there. I'm not allowed to go visit my dad anymore because my stepmom doesn't like that I do porn. But You telling me as a grown man, you letting a mother who stepped into your temporary life, you letting her dictate when to see your child that you gave life to through her mother, her biological mother, and you telling me a woman that you just met probably this year or whatever time period you met her, you met her somehow, some way after your daughter was born, you're telling me you can't see your daughter because of her profession? told me that 
when I was like, can we like go get coffee and like we go like get breakfast? And he's like, I don't want to be seen in public with you. And that just <laughs> hurt so bad. But truth be told, you did it to yourself. So you can't be mad at your father for that. But as a father, it's like fam, she she made a mistake. As a father, you gotta step up and just be there for your kids. They are gonna fuck up. They're gonna, they're literally going to, sometimes there'll be so many kids who would fuck their life up to the point to where they can't come back from it. But as a parent, you have to be there to guide them towards that love that they're looking for. Like, I don't even know what this, what this snow bunny's going through. She put it, she did it to herself and that is her fault. She has to live with that, whoop de doo but as a parent, there's no way you should you should neglect your child's love that they have ordained themselves to believe came from you and them. They ordain themselves to believe that you will always love them. And it's hard for a child to actually be alive knowing that their mom or dad won't talk to them because you do porn. This is a lot. This is like this is why many people hurt people hurt people. Because misery loves company. This is exactly why many people are miserable. And they're going to keep doing what keeps them happy. Selling their body. Because what does it do? It provides temporary happiness with what? <sighs> it's a trap. If you do porn, you are trapped in your own closed-minded past traumatic situations. And you won't justify it. And you won't get no help. And you won't seek help within yourself. So what do you do? You go look for attention by selling your body to websites that don't see yourself. They don't see your worth for what you're really worth. Message! And it sucks. I lost my family. I don't talk to, like, my brothers or sisters. I think that they all kind of, like, try to take advantage of me and stuff. Or they're just... Like, my dad don't want to be around me. It, that's not how it was. It wasn't just, hey, do you want to come do porn? It was more so, oh, you're beautiful. Like, would you like to do some modeling? Oh, uh, you know, you have a great body. Like, I think you'd be great in nude modeling. Uh, things like that. And after I came and toured the studio, you know, it was very respectable. It was a gorgeous location. It was uh, in Miami, in Doral, Florida. Um, it was clean. Everyone who worked there was nice. All of their cubicles were decorated with family photos like it was nothing dodgy or that made me uncomfortable and after do like it the first time i went in wasn't the first that's time that's how they get so stupid ass you thought it wasn't nothing like that but that's the best way for a manipulator to manipulate your ass making you think that you're walking into something great not knowing they selling you false dreams that you're going to sell your soul to and to where you can't get out of that contract because now you have fell into their hands you fell for the bait because you wanted money you wanted attention you wanted you wanted different dicks in your body and shit and you can't get upset that you sold yourself to an industry that does not care about your well-being they just care what you can do for them physically sell your body so that we can make this money off of you i i filmed a porn movie um <laughs> it was the second time uh the first time was more so do you want to do this? Like, sign the paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. So these guys, they just saw you, frankly, as a money machine. Absolutely. But you still had no advisors, you had no lawyer, you had no nothing. So I was tw What 21-year-old has a lawyer on retainer? I, I, I'm just trying to get my head around... 21 in the industry. And it doesn't justify that. Like, you're still a baby, damn near. Like, you grown, but you're not grown enough to be doing this shit. But hey... People got to learn on their own, so it doesn't even matter. How stressful this must have been, and whether even now, because you sit here so poised, and obviously a lot of time has passed and you've moved on, but do you think there is some sort of post-traumatic stress that is in you from this experience? Yes, and uh, I think it kicks in mostly when I go out in public, because the stares I get, I feel like people can see through my clothes, and it brings me deep shame. It, it makes me feel like, it makes me feel like uh, I lost all right to my privacy, which I did because I'm one Google search away. Yeah. It stays like this. For and it's like, this is why we have to stop this shit now. It's like, it's like you're driving and you know there's a cliff on the other side. And you know what's going to happen when you drop off that cliff. But you just want to see for yourself anyway because you don't believe that there's nothing over that cliff till it's too late.
We have to stop doing things when it's too late, but it's never too late to begin a new life. The thing is, we have to stop going into these industries thinking that our life is going to be okay or that the money is going to justify our stress or our pain or our misery. Get some real motherfucking help, my nigga. Like, if you don't want to go talk to a therapist, a psychologist, if you don't want to talk to a doctor, if you don't want to talk to anything else, talk to the universe, meditate, go pray, go talk to God. Because if you're doing, if you're going to do OnlyFans or the porn industry, I kid you not, in the future, the way society's moving right now, you're going to regret it like these women here. And we have to stop this shit from the beginning because why are we waiting till it's too late to understand what was going to happen from the beginning? You knew you were going to get shamed doing porn. You knew that you were going to get famous because you look and you have a nice body. And you think that you're going to have a regular life just walking in a Walmart, not thinking that a nigga who's probably 40 years old with a, with a gut and he got his beards not even cut, his hairline fucked up. He probably got, you know, pizza stains under his fucking armpits and shit his his shirt probably dirty and shit his shoes probably leaning he probably breathing heavy because you know he he can't he don't work out but what can he do great waste his energy waste his nut on you so that's the fact that you had to sit there and you had to live with that that's your fault and they thank you for that because you boost their dopamine you help them waste their energy what did you gain out of that their money so what are you mad about that's what happens when you're greedy. You're so greedy, she basically walked into her own stressful situation and she gave herself karma and she gave herself PTSD because of her unconscious choices, because she wasn't thinking in the future. You gotta stop thinking right now. Even though you're thinking right now, you gotta build for your future because now her kids, kids, kids will know that Mia Khalifa was a porn star. Message! I realize I need to go play with myself. Living, I just like ate. I'm tired. And then I think to myself, maybe a nine to five won't be so bad, you know. I know you don't feel sorry for me, but after four years, you know, my clit just sits there. And says, please, please, man, no more, not again. She just admitted that she has no discipline and that's okay because there's nothing wrong with a little clit action though, okay? there's no cat. There's nothing wrong with looking at it, but you don't have discipline to just do something with your life besides playing with yourself. That's how bored you are. You're so bored that you waste your valuable time playing with your clit and it's there. It's there, but you're still playing with it, wasting time when you could be growing, you could be building something, you could be building for something. You could be coming better than who you were, but you want to play with your clit to feel good. And you know that's a temporary addiction and you keep being addicted to a temporary experience. That, that gets you nowhere. And around and around and went. What pornography did to me was it changed how I thought and felt about women. We know began to look at them like objects more. like objects this is what's going to happen as a young man you keep on watching porn you keep on wasting your energy you're going to look at women as objects and they will see you as the exact same thing you are what you attract so if you are a hoe you will attract hoes if you are a faithful person you will attract faithful you will attract faithful people people god damn if you are a pimp you will attract other pimps or hoes that's a contradiction so if you are a young man, do not be surprised with what you attract and what you see through your attraction. So you will see women as objects and therefore they will not want to talk to you and they will see you as a what? A loser. As a sexual object, I lost the ability to have a loving and caring relationship. This is what's going to happen in your future. So if you don't take nothing from this shit, hear from their experiences and learn from it. This nigga came and have a caring or a loving relationship because of porn. That's what porn did to this nigga's mind. He's telling you his trauma and what he's going through right now. And he's still not dead. So he's living for something. And it's got to be himself. 
because he can't live with nobody else because nobody's gonna respect him. He's a loser. No offense. I thought I was still able. I was fooled. One day. I left the set. I was done for the day. Got in my car. Started it up, drove two blocks, pulled over and turned it off. And I started crying. I wanted out so bad. I wanted to get off that merry-go-round. Hey, Randy Spears, most successful male porn star ever. What kept you from leaving? What kept you staying in that environment, in that industry? What was it? And how are you the most successful? You're the most successful male porn star ever. And you were crying. And your success. Don't sound successful to me. It's the last movie I ever made. And I never went back. It changed my life. And it's that that's why it's hard to judge people like that because struggling to pay the rent, no excuses, but I me I understand. Like you gotta get it how you get it, but that's not the route to go. But if you wanna go that route by all means, just wear a seatbelt. Just wear a seatbelt because you're gonna crash out. I would spend thousands and thousands of dollars on drugs a week because I started off with cocaine, but then eventually I was battling um, with the heroin addiction, so I was like, I was just like super high. My eyes would go black. I was also battling with severe suicidal thoughts. It took Brittany more than one attempt to leave porn, but in the end, it was religion that gave her the final push she needed. Started going to church and I went to go film a porn scene in Las Vegas and I brought my Bible and on the airplane I open up Revelation 2.20 and it says I have this thing against you. You tolerate that woman named Jezebel and she leads my people into sexual immorality. I've given her time to repent and if she doesn't repent I will cast her children and her into a sick bed. Literally, Jezebel spirits run the industry. That's exactly why they push these women narratives upon the masses through music, through movies, through school systems, through porn, literally. And and what's crazy with the Bible as well, the Bible's made from false prophets that are prophesizing their prophecy. So it has some truth to it, letting you know Jezebel spirits are a real thing and they're a part of you as well. So if you're not awake to what the fuck is going on, you will be overrun by an unconscious spirit that is consciously programming your algorithm. So you will think that you want to watch porn. Nah, it's that spirit inside of you telling you and overtaking your true spiritual self and it's masquerading it with your addiction and you think that that's the true you and it's not you. Your soul, your spirit is not one to keep wasting its energy. Imagine Busting nuts every day. Imagine busting one nut, two nut, three nut, four nuts every single day. Imagine how much life you are wasting. You will have no indication on what life even is at this point. as many pills as I could get my hands on and then just drink and drink and drink trying to overdose when I would wake up from my suicide attempts um, I would get drunk and, like it was that realization that I hated who I became I hated money and it was killing me <laughs> if this don't save nobody then I don't know what will they, people who are damn near millionaires are telling you they had all the money and they were still killing them. You you sold out for what then? You got all this and you still aren't happy? 
Was it worth it? This should help you. It's not worth it. Stop wasting your energy on program robots who only care about fortune that doesn't even exist, but it exists physically. I called my parents and I said, I really messed up. That was the night my parents answered the phone. So through recovery, my parents have been there. When I traded in porn, I got my family back. Now we talk every single day. There is nothing that is worth the life I chose. Now that I'm out of the industry, I want to be a wife. Get real. I want to be a mother. That can happen, but get real. And one thing that I really want is I want to be a friend. I want the truth to be known about porn. So... Ho whoever she is, I, I pray to God you're expressing the truth. <laughs> Why am I hoping when we're doing it right now? The scene starts and right away it's just... Push, push, slap, slap, push, push, split, spit, slap, whore. It was just this bomb of, of just physical abuse, you know, and... I knew that going into that it was going to be like that, but I mean, it was just sort of, whoa, you know, it, it really took me off. So this Nordic, this, 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 this Antarctic polar bear literally just said what she knew she was going into and she still allowed the abuse because it's all she knows. You cannot save them. They don't want to be saved. Stop saving them. Let them walk into, let, let them walk off the cliff. And let them catch themselves and their own bullshit. She just said. Dark. I was 24 years old when I entered porn. I was a burned out prostitute and stripper. I was a single mom. Oh my God. You were a burned out prostitute. Hold on. No, 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 no. no. I was a burned out prostitute and stripper. Prost you, so you try prostitution. That ain't work out. You try stripping. That ain't work out. And a single mom? I was a single mom, addicted to drugs and alcohol. On drugs and alcohol. I was the kind of person that the porn industry preys upon. Giving you free game. They prey on the weak minded. You have nowhere to go. You have no avenue to vent to besides the drugs, the alcohol, or suicide. Well, we'll welcome you with open arms, but it comes with a price. And what's crazy that that sounds like a victim mentality coming from a victim. Because if you knew what they were about, why would you join the predators when you know they're preying upon the prey? Why would you join the predators when you know they're preying upon you? Why? That shows we overthink our own ignorance. They promised me fame, fortune, attention. They promised me I would be the next biggest, hottest porn star. And they promised me that I would be kept safe. That porn people are the cleanest people in the world. And that if we get our tests every 30 days for HIV, that I'll be kept safe. Are you sure? Of course, baby, of course we're sure. You'll be safe. Well, after about 30 movies, I got burned and I caught two sexually transmitted diseases. One of those diseases was HPV, human papillomavirus, which I had never heard of. And another was a non curable disease, herpes. You knew, you were, you knew you were gonna play with fire and you expected to not get burnt. You knew that you were going to walk into some fire and you expected to not get burnt. And you had to live with that for the rest of your life. 
catching herpes back in the 90s was like catching HIV. I mean, your life is over. You are going to be forever stuck with this disease. And it devastated me. And I tried to kill myself with prescription pills. I didn't care anymore. I had herpes on my mouth, my lips, my throat, my my anus, everywhere. I was a monster. How far I had come. I joined the porn industry. I was promised glamour, fame and fortune. Here I'm standing in the worst human ugliness you could possibly see in the mirror. And I was devastated. And I thought my life was over. Like many of the porn stars who catch non curable diseases. The STDs are rampant in the porn industry. And what, what's horrible is these people don't understand that even repeat infections are breaking down their immune system. Over, you know, after they have so many STDs, sooner or later they're going to live with the long-term health effects like I am. I'm 43 years old now, and I still have problems with my period, with my cervix. I had to have half of my cervix removed because of all the herpes lesions, and I couldn't have babies after that. Praise God, by the grace of God, that I have children, I'm blessed. But I did lose four children because of the damage to my sexual organs. The porn industry does nothing more than damage lives. It damages the lives of the workers. It damages the lives of the general public. It damages the lives of the men who are viewing pornography, who are addicted to porn. I, I was caught. She just dropped, whoever that was, she just dropped gems. Even though she made a mistake, she's learning from it. And that's the most beautiful thing at whatever age she is right now. But at 43, that's amazing to honestly see. But we have to see it for what it is. Because there's some people who will still watch the industry. They'll still watch the porn. If you are addicted to it, you are a little boy or a little girl. Grow the fuck up. Why watch it when you can create it in your own house? Only going to urgent care. With somebody you care about. It to urgent I had to be taken to urgent care maybe more than 10 times and then the actual emergency room I had to go there twice I was constantly getting sick with strep throat mono getting the flu like I was constantly getting sick and also you know uh, with infections down there like bacterial vaginosis urinary tract infections yeast infections and then eventually towards the end of my career i caught herpes um but yeah i was constantly getting sick and not just that because of the types of scenes that i was doing i couldn't eat i was not allowed to eat and so i would go days without eating and just really munch on on gummy bears and energy drinks just so i could get through my scenes i wasn't healthy at all You getting fucked with gummy bears and energy drinks in your system? It happens so often with people who are in the industry that they have this trajectory that they see their life going and when you start to view yourself as being a product, that your value is indicative of that service, and that service being sex. And for 30 people who were dear to my heart, that I knew personally, that were in the industry at the same time as me, um, what was next, they didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. So 30 of those people have taken the line. I want to continue telling my story um, because while pornography in itself is so dark and so detrimental to people, I think that there's an underlying story within my story, and it's that your past doesn't have to define you, and your mistakes don't become you. Like, that's not who you are. I think there's too many people that deserve a second chance that don't give themselves a second chance because of the mistakes they've made. Every, every, everyone makes mistakes. And that is, that is my biggest message for people. It's like, regardless of what you've done, uh, an event or a series of events don't define who you are. Like, each and every person is valuable, and they have gifts and talents and charisma, and they have something to offer. You can't choose what happens to you. 
but you can always choose how you respond to it. At the end of the day, porn, the porn industry is the biggest killer, one of the biggest killers in our society I, I, right now. I, I, I understand that. If we don't save ourselves, then the porn industry would do it for us. So you have to know what you're watching and why you are watching it. Before you even decide to click on that video, ask yourself, what do I gain from watching this video? How does this video help my life? How does this video help me build my business? How does this video help me get my mom or dad that house? How does this video get me that car I want? Or the trip to a different island that I want to go to? How? If it's not helping benefit your life, why watch it? Why are you allowing an addiction to deplete your life daily? And then you wonder why you have no energy to do shit. And you wonder why you have a negative perspective on life. And you wonder why you have a shitty attitude in life. It's because you know that you're doing wrong, but you're justifying your wrongs because it's addicting. It's so addicting that it became comforting. And now you're lying in your own comfortable delusion. It's time to wake up, family. I love you. Have a great day.